Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian and today we are going to talk about texture painting and texture paint mode. So once again you can hit tab and you can go right into texture paint but I don't recommend you do that right off the bat because there's some things you might want to sort out first. First of all we actually have a texture paint tab up here that you can use which makes things a lot easier for you. So once you're in here, you'll realize there's an image editor here and the UVs are all laid out and there's a cube here and it's purple and there's all sorts of tools in here. Once you go over to the texture paint tab, we are already in texture paint mode. So you don't have to worry about getting into that. And also the top bar here is automatically enabled. So that's nice. We've got some good settings here going on, but we don't have any texture to paint on, which is kind of a problem since it is texture painting. So if we go over here and add new, we can create a new texture, and then we have it. But our cube is still purple here, so what's wrong with it? To fix this, we go into the materials tab, and you can see there's already a material, but there's no texture. So if we go to base color and hit this little dot here, we can plug in our image texture, text, and now it's black. So that's great. Immediately, you can see we can just paint on the cube, and that is texture painting in a nutshell. If you want to go outside the nutshell, we can look into a few more settings here, like stroke. If you want to have something that's got a little more texture to it, you can add jitter. And that effect sort of gives it a little bit more randomness and texture. Also, you can see as we paint over stuff, it gets more and more white. And that's because the strength isn't all the way up. So if you want to do that, you can. If you've got a tablet, there's strength pressure here, so you get an effect that's a lot more feathered. Like you can do some really dim stuff, and then more pressure, it gets a lot lighter. As you would expect with a tablet. That's some jitter and pressure and brush settings. Another thing you might want to look at is the fall off. There's a few different modes you can use here. This has like super hard edges, as you can see. It's just a circle. Which doesn't look very amazing, but there's also a few different settings you can do like this or one of these and there's also radius up here so you can change the size of your brush and see the effect you're having a little better so yeah that's different fall off and I'm gonna skip everything else in here but you can experiment with it let's move along to something else like the fill tool so with this, it works pretty much as you would expect. You just click and it sort of changes the overall texture. Something that's worth mentioning is at any point you can go over to this tab and that is set to paint mode. So you can just paint whatever you want in there, which is kind of handy sometimes. And you can see it's updating to the cube. Then we also have our smear and soften brushes, which do pretty much what they sound, makes it blurry. If we go over to the soften and try and soften up one of these hard circles, you can see that works out pretty well. And then also we have the clone tool, which is really handy, especially when you're dealing with actual image textures and you're trying to cover up seams and stuff. I'm just going to give a quick demonstration here with this texture, and then maybe we can pop over to an actual image texture just to look and see how that would be helpful. So Clone Brush 101 is your 3D cursor is the place that it's copying from. So if I shift and right click, I can drag it wherever I want. Say I want to copy this very specific part here, and then you can just paint anywhere and it'll clone it over. Pretty basic, but always helpful to know how to do that. All right, so I mentioned I would use a real image texture and here we have a real image texture. I'm just going to go over to that in the image editor and we can see we've got it all nicely laid out and this will be a real world example of why you might want to use the clone brush. And in this mode you can see our seams are a little bit more obvious here. I'm just going to drop shading to flat with the menu up here and now we can really see the texture we're working on pretty clearly. So let's make it so that some of these seams disappear with the clone brush. So once again shift right click to drag the 3D cursor wherever you need to and then you can just drop it and get texture painting. 
although we're not in texture paint mode, so here we go. When you're texture painting and copying stuff, usually you'd want the fall off to be pretty nice and smooth so that the edges aren't sharp and you get even more seams than you started out with. So now you can see our seams are pretty much gone and it's a little blurry, but it's a lot better than it was. So that's a good practical use of texture painting for you right there. And I think this is about the end of the tutorial. So I hope you learned something useful and I'll see you again tomorrow on a tutorial about vertex paint. Cheers.